A potent fall front will be bringing rounds of severe storms and a much anticipated cool down to the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes and the Northeast this week. We'll be also previewing your fall forecast from September through November in today's video, as well as a new major hurricane brewing in the North Atlantic Ocean that we'll get to those details later on in today's video. We have a low pressure system spinning up here into the upper Midwest this afternoon, and that's going to continue to sweep a cold front to the east across the United United States, the eastern two-thirds of the country this week. And if you are not a new subscriber to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button so I can keep you ahead of your weather forecast across southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. And be sure to press the thumbs up button as this helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. So looking at that fall front, it's moving across the Midwest and the Mississippi Valley as of today. Lots of warm and humid air out ahead of that front here. You can definitely feel it as you go outside there in Chicago, Milwaukee, down here into the Missouri Ozarks. It's sticky out there. That could lead to some severe storms as we go through today, but behind the front, it's beautiful. We got stable, cool air behind the front. That's going to continue to sweep east as we go into Wednesday. That'll bring the severe storm risk a little bit further to the east across the Ohio Valley and the deep south on Wednesday, but by the end of the week, by Friday, this front will finally be moving in toward the east coast the mid-atlantic states the northeast down into the southeast we're going to be seeing some showers and storms but that much anticipated cool down will be right behind the front as we go into this upcoming weekend so taking a look at the storm chances we have a couple areas of higher concern of severe weather now this is not an outbreak but we are seeing a slight risk that's a level two out of five in the yellow shaded colors here from the twin cities region up toward duluth getting into northern wisconsin and the western UP of Michigan there, as well as the Missouri Ozarks region around the Springfield, Missouri area, Branson, Missouri and southwestward toward the Tulsa region. Even that marginal risk that extends into northwest Texas will have to be watching for some stronger storms. Up near the track of the low pressure system, we do have some spin, so a low end chance of tornadoes, a 2% shading in a lot of areas up here. We'll not see a tornado today, but the potential is there for an isolated tornado or two if you live into northeastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, or the western UP of Michigan. Ahead to Wednesday, this storm is going to continue to uh, progress further to the east. We're going to have the cold front across the Ohio Valley and into the Tennessee Valley, the Dixie Alley region down here, Mississippi, northern Alabama into northwest Georgia, Tennessee, on up through Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, you name it. We're going to be seeing a marginal risk of severe weather on Wednesday. And then as we go into Thursday, that lifts up there into portions of New York State, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and also West Virginia, those areas, northern Virginia, and then another marginal risk down here toward portions of Little Rock. That's just for damaging winds large hail the tornado threat is basically nil at this point as we go into Wednesday and Thursday looking at the total rainfall accumulation now through the end of the week uh, the work week that is on Friday September 8th you can see not everybody is going to see thunderstorms. There will be plenty of pockets that don't see any rain through the week here. But if you get under one of those thunderstorms, especially up near the low pressure track, just be watching out for some heavier rain. It looks to set up here into the Arrowhead of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, getting through portions of Ontario and Quebec. That looks to be the heaviest corridor of rainfall from about one to as much as three inches of rain. But further south from there, just some spotty localized downpours other than that. Very dry, very dry out west here as we go through the rest of this week, too. I want to note that, that it's going to be very dry. If you live across the Rockies, the West Coast, the Southern Plains, the Southeast, yeah, it's going to be pretty dry going through that Friday time frame. Looking at those temperatures, like I mentioned, behind the front, a much anticipated cool down. Ahead of the front today, we have lots of 90s out there, triple digits here ahead of the front, that warm, sticky air mass leading to some severe weather, and the clash of air masses as well. Look at the temperatures behind the front, the Dakotas. We're into the mid-60s. That's your high today across portions of the Dakotas and getting into northwestern Nebraska. As that front sweeps to the east on Wednesday, we're going to see a noticeable cool down across the Twin Cities area. We're barely up to 70 degrees there in Minneapolis, St. Paul on Wednesday, barely to 80 degrees there in Green Bay, and barely to 79, 80 degrees in Des Moines as we go into Wednesday. All that heat, all the humidity will be pushing further off to the east and the south. Yes, unfortunately, more triple digits for Texas and portions of the Red River there into the southern plains on Wednesday. Then as we go 
go into Thursday, that cooler air mass continues to progress further east toward the mid-Atlantic, so the Ohio Valley will be feeling a nice, refreshing air mass by Thursday. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Some return flow across the Great Plains on Thursday will lead to those triple digits pushing further to the north. That could include 101 degree reading there into Oklahoma City, 96 there as we go into Tulsa, and maybe near 100 in Dodge City, Kansas, the Garden City region. So we're going to continue to watch that as we go through the week, but definitely a nice cool down further to the north. Let's step back here, look at the El Nino. We are in a moderate El Nino right now at plus 1.226. Once we get to plus 1.5, that is actually considered a strong El Nino. And as you know, a 0.0, .0 that's neutral, and negative values are La Nina conditions. So we are well on the positive side. We're in a moderate El Nino right now and probably heading towards a strong El Nino this fall and into or the early winter months. And looking at that, these are your sea surface temperature anomalies currently across the equatorial Pacific. Very much of a fire hose of very warm waters here from South America coast all the way east there towards the Hawaiian Islands and just south of the Hawaiian Islands. Very, very warm. That is a signal for an El Nino, and that continues to strengthen slowly but surely as we go into the fall months here and especially into winter. So let's preview those temperature anomalies. It's been very warm to start off September across the middle of the country. Overall, it does look to be well above average with our temperatures mainly east of the Rockies as we go through the entire month of September. This is an average of 30 days and you can see across the west coast it's more average to slightly above average here as well so we're going to see more troughs digging into the west That'll knock our temperature averages down, but we're still going to be seeing some warmer temperatures at times up into the Pacific Northwest. The drought feedback there could be, you know, giving us some warmer temperatures at times this month. Then looking at the precipitation trends through September, very dry across the southeast and the southern part of the United States here. We see some wetter conditions or at least near average precipitation across the Rockies getting into the West Coast, California, Oregon, Washington included there for September. Moving ahead to October, it does look like we're going to start to see more of a transition month. You see a lot of orange on here and that, you know, pops into your mind saying, well, that's above average temperatures. Well, there's going to be some cool downs, and I do think there are going to be some cool shots of air from southwest Canada through the northern plains into the Midwest as we go into October. But when you average all 31 days up in October, it's likely to be slightly above average with our temperatures all across southern Canada, the United States, and even down into Mexico as well. And looking here at your October precipitation anomaly, it does look to set up more active across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes down into the portions of the the Ohio Valley, the Missouri Ozarks region there. A lot drier out west as we go into October, and it's still persisting the dry conditions across the southern plains, especially down near the Gulf Coast. But what I'm concerned about with October, the clash of air masses, kind of like we're seeing this week with the rounds of severe weather, we're going to have warm temperatures ahead of these fronts into October, clashing with the cooler, stable air from Canada moving down with frequent cold fronts. This could lead to some severe weather in the middle of the country near the Corn Belt as we go through October, especially the first half of October. Then as we progress through November, this is late fall now, it does look to take more of an El Nino look. We do start to see warmer temperature anomalies across southern and southeastern Canada and into the upper Midwest there with more of still above average anomalies to the south, but we're going to start to see more of an active subtropical jet setting up. So I wouldn't be surprised if our southern and southeastern areas do trend closer to average or even slightly below average with our temperatures as we go into through the month of November. And looking at that, there's a mixed signal there for a subtropical jet starting to activate there in November. You can see it really starts to get going through the Lone Star State there in Texas, near the Gulf Coast and the Southeast. The Carolinas start to turn wetter as we go into November. We still see some above average precipitation up into Southeast Canada, the Great Lakes and the Upper Midwest, but it's starting to transition to drier conditions up across the northern tier of the United States as we go through November. So that is something to monitor as 
as we take more of the El Nino look into the late fall months there. And now we turn to the hurricane season. We do have the peak of hurricane season approaching us very quickly as we go into next week. That is the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. And looking at the eastern Pacific Basin, that is basically the same thing. We're in the peak of the hurricane season right now into next week. So that is something to keep an eye on. Looking at the North Atlantic, we do have Tropical Depression 13 that has just formed. And this is likely to be our next major player in the North Atlantic. This is going to be progressing west-northwest over the next several days. And you can see right now it's kind of a little bit more disorganized. Uh, but this is progressing further off to the west-northwest. And we're going to keep an eye on it. Already, by the time we get in towards this evening or into tomorrow morning, this is going to be a tropical storm. It's already at 35 miles per hour, progressing west-northwest at 15 miles per hour. And this is likely to be named Lee. So as we go into portions of your Wednesday-Thursday time frame, we're already seeing a Category 1, Category 2 hurricane, and then a major hurricane is expected to the north and east of the Lesser Antilles by Saturday. This could be a formidable, strong hurricane that could be Category 3 or 4 strength by then, and possibly progressing to a Cat 5 just to the north and east of Puerto Rico as we go into later on this upcoming weekend, around that Sunday-Monday time frame. So we'll keep an eye on that. Looking at that, no surprise here, we have very warm sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic. Nearly much of the systems that have developed have developed either in the Gulf or into portions of the Western Atlantic. So we see some up upwelling over here. But the main development region so far this hurricane season has been unimpeded by any of, of these systems developing until today. So as we go through today into tomorrow, into the next day, the following day after that, we're going to see lots of warm water temperatures for this thing to crank up on. And this is going to continue to progress to the west. Now, looking at the ensemble tracks, this takes a bunch of different solutions and puts them into one. And this, this black line right here is the kind of more of the average of all of these ensembles. Ensembles. This takes it just to the north and east of the Lesser Antilles, just to the north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and then turns it up just before it reaches the Bahamas and just to the west there of Bermuda. Now, this would be the best possible outcome that we could hope for as it misses land here and it misses Bermuda to the west and also misses the United States to the east. So this is the outcome that we definitely want to have as we go in towards portions of next week. So let's look at one of the European model has to say for this here today yes we have a tropical depression 1007 millibar low down here in the MDR the main development region as we go into Thursday this is a couple days from now this is September 7th likely already seeing a hurricane by this point category one possibly category two strength just to the east northeast of the lesser Antilles as we go into this weekend, this is Saturday, this is September 9th, likely getting towards major hurricane status here, probably a Category 3 at this point, 959 millibar low just to the north and east of Puerto Rico and to the north and east of the Lesser Antilles in general. And then as we go into early next week, yeah, a 928 millibar low on a non-hurricane model here, the European forecast model, that's pretty impressive here across portions of the North Atlantic. That is just to the north of the Puerto Rico and the Dominican likely still seeing some indirect impacts wave heights out there um, that could be well in excess of 20 feet in some areas we also could be seeing some rip currents and a lot of stuff like that so we'll be keeping an eye on it here with even indirect impacts across the islands as we go into early next week this is the european model the gfs model a little weaker 947 a little bit further to the north there so we'll keep an eye on that the canadian model basically in the same place a 972 millibar and even the icon model this is probably the most concerning run as a 935 has it a little bit closer, too close for comfort there for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. So we'll keep an eye on all these models here. I just showed you four models, the European, the American GFS, the Canadian, and the Icon model, and also all the ensembles. So this is what we see as we go through next week. We'll keep an eye on it and keep you updated. Looking on the eastern Pacific side, we have Tropical Storm Java over here in the eastern Pacific. This is beginning to organize across this area right now, just off the coast there of Mexico. And the good news is it's going to be progressing further off to the west and missing North America, but it will strengthen into a major hurricane, likely Category 3 strength as we go into later this week on Thursday and maintaining hurricane strength all the way through the weekend. Right now, it's a 50-mile-per-hour tropical storm. It's 
moving west at 10 miles per hour, and this is Tropical Storm Java. You can see today, this is a tropical storm. We're going to continue to see it strengthen into a hurricane, likely a major hurricane here by late in the week, and that will continue to maintain hurricane strength as it progresses well away from North America over the open waters of the eastern Pacific Ocean as we go into this weekend. This is on Saturday, September 9th, so that's some good news there. But as we go into late this week, with it too close for comfort for Mexico and the Baja of California, there still could be some rip currents and some stronger waves crashing ashore, so make sure if you're swimming out here, Make sure to watch out for the double flags and all that out there as well um, to make sure that if you want to swim, that you know that if there's rip currents out there, you know the threats for that as well. So make sure you have that at your arsenal as we go into later this week. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Additional weather forecast updates uh, in the description down below the video. Press the link down there. You can follow me on Twitter or X at HWeather420. I will be updating you on the hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean, especially on this here as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for for watching share this video with friends family social media twitter instagram x whatever you call it share this video we need to have as many people as possible to watch this video and you can help by that every single one of you by pressing the thumbs up button this helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible well thank you guys so much for watching and i hope everybody has a great rest of their week out there